Hello my dear students, welcome back to Jeevsing Academy. So today we are going to discuss about the SQL that is the structure query language. So the first things you have to understand is what is the SQL. Actually SQL is the SQL is the part of the all DBMS and RDBMS software. It provide you a command, set of commands through which you can manage the database, you can create the tables, you can store the data inside the table and you can manage these all things. Actually, it's uh, having the so many language commands are there. So out of these two commands, two uh, commands are the most popular. The one is known as the DDL commands and that is called data definition language. And another is the DML command that is called data manipulation language. Where DDL, by the name, you can easily understand it is responsible for defining the structures and constraints of data. While you are creating the database or after that you're supposed to create a table. So when you are creating the table in a SQL, you have to specify the name of the column, you have to specify the data type, you have to specify the constraints. So these facilities you are getting with the help of the DDL commands as well as you can modify the structure of the table also with the help of the, this DDL command. Then I'm going to talk about the DML command. So DML is used to insert, modify and delete data in the database. Means after creating the structure, after creating, managing, uh, making the structure, you're supposed to insert some records in your table because uh, creating a structure is just making a layout of the tables, see what types of information you want to store in that table. But the actual information is not there for, for that, for which you have already created the table. So to, if you want to store the information in your table, you have to use the DML command. That is the insert command. With the help of that, you can insert the records inside the table. In a table, with the help of the update command, you can modify the, suppose there are any information is getting wrong or some information is supposed to be updated and modified. For that purpose, you have to use the update command. And for deleting the records, if you don't want any more records, then you have to use the delete command. So these are the commands belongs to DML while create table, all the table, create database, uh, drop table, drop database. These are the parts of the DDL commands. So now we are going to explain these all things. I'm going to explain. So what is the SQL commands? Actually, SQL commands are used to perform all operations. So in case you want to study the SQL, uh, generally our database systems need to be installed on your computer. So there are different types of the softwares are available. So we are going to study about the MySQL server. If you haven't installed, I have already told you, you can install the SQL on your computer. So in a SQL, what happened, the, all the relations are known as the table, the information is stored as a row and row is the collection of the columns. That is the relational model system, relations, tuples and attributes. So if you want to install the MySQL, please visit on this website and download it. And if you haven't downloaded, then I have already told you in the last video, okay, there is a one video in which I explain how you are going to install the MySQL on your computer. So let's move. I assume that you have already installed the software on your computer. No need to explain this screenshot. It's a well explained. If you go through this screenshot, you can easily understand what steps you have to follow. Okay, now. So now we are going to talk about the some SQL commands here. So first things we have to create the database. The first things you have to create the database and after creating the database, you're supposed to create the table. And while you are going to create a table, new table or new relations, you have to follow, you have to use the create table command. The syntax of the create table command is looks like this, create table, and then you have to give the table name, and then you will type the column data type, and then you have to give the constraints. One very important thing which you must be remember while you are looking on the syntax, you find out that some informations are written inside the angular bracket. Like this, you can see the informations are written inside the angular bracket, while the some informations are written inside the square bracket. So if anything is written inside the square bracket, it means this is the optional component. You may ignore this. It's not mandatory. You have to write. But whatever written inside the angular bracket, it means it's a replaceable things. In place of this, you have to write some name. You have to give some valid information. Okay, so create table command. So how you are going to use the create table command, create table and then the table name, then open parenthesis, then column name, data type, their constraint, 
comma must be given because you want to define the another column so another column name their data type and the constant if it is required then again comma then next column data type constant and if you don't want to give any more column then close the parenthesis and put the semicolon there okay so it's a clear so semicolon in a, in a sql all sql statements ended with a semicolon so these things you have to understand now before going to discuss about the how to use the create table command as i discuss with you in the create table command first you have to mention the column name and then you are going to specify the data type so you must be aware about the data type because data type is everywhere you have to learn it in a python in a java also in a python also in every programming language and in the same way in a mysql also so there are five important data types you must be aware first thing if you don't know what is the data type the data type which is specify the type of the data and while you specify the what types of data is going to be stored in a particular attribute or particular field or column it means you want to say that the type of the information as well the type of the operations are possible in on that particular column okay so now the first you have to understand what is the care data type char is a fixed length character string where n specify the number of characters like this char 5 it means you are going to store the five characters a name or a word which is having the only five characters the one thing you have to understand here what is the meaning of the fixed length fixed length means every time either you are giving the two characters name or three characters name but size is the five here so my what the mysql is uh, mysql is doing there mysql is going to attach concatenate the spaces just after your string so now the string is going to become the five characters long every time doesn't mean you have given the two characters long name three characters long name or five characters name if you have written the five characters name, then no nothing is happen but in case of two and three it is going to add some more spaces there so this is the first things you have to understand so that's why it is called fixed length the second is the var char and with the help of the name you can easily identify the var stands for the variable and variable length character string where n is the maximum number of characters you can see that the difference the in the statement n is the number of characters and n is the maximum number of characters in the string it means what ki while you are working with the var char data type and suppose you have uh, size is the 5 here or 15 here suppose the size is the 15 here but in this case you have not given the 15 characters long name here in that case the characters the how much characters you have given that much memory is going to be consumed it's not going to add any extra space to maintain the size to 15 but in case of the char it's happen so this is a very important questions for you what is the difference between char and var char the next data type is the date and through the date you are going to specify the date information if you want to store the date be careful the date is always in this format yyy mm dd for example 2014 320 this is the best example and always remember like a string like character data type date is also written inside the single or double quote the next is the integer data type what is the integer means integer number if you want to store any numeric value without any decimal point for this purpose you are supposed to use the integer data type the next is the decimal decimal is the having the two size information m comma d where m specify the maximum number of digits the number of significant digits okay while d specify the number of digits after the decimal point okay if d is 0 in that case you are not able to give d is 0 in that case you are not able to give any point any digits after the decimal point like here decimal 5 comma 2 is means three digit before the decimal point and two digit after the decimal points this i have to verify for you only because as i am my information 5 comma 2 means we can give the two digits before the decimal point and two digits after the decimal point that's i will check and ensure you don't worry okay so now you understand ki how what are the different data types are available in mysql it's not only the five data types are available i am just talking about the five important data types and that is the important for you suppose we used to create a database now now as i told you ki while you are creating the table the first things you have to create the database 
database is actually the container in which you are going to create table also you can create the views also you can create the indexes also so all the information related to your database is going to store inside the database only and inside the tables you are inserting the records always remember this so if you delete the any database it means everything is going to be destroyed and deleted and if you delete the table then all the records inside the tables are going to be deleted there so be careful about this so now we want to create a table here so to create a table so first things the first things if you want to create any table like this table you want to create here so the first things you have to create the database the first things you have to create the database so this things you must be aware before creating the any table you supposed to create a database and database we are not going to create every times means if i have created the my database first time then i am going to open my database and then i am going to give the command to the create table if i want to create another new table inside my database so let's explore these things first of all i am i am having to start the mysql so now i am writing here mysql in my computer it's already installed so you supposed to open mysql 8 command line client might be possible in your computer it is 5.6 you can start that one no problem so just make a click here now after starting of mysql it is asking the password for my computer the password is r o o g root only you may decide while installing at the time of the installation you can decide the what is the password of this and if you want to change you can change it also this option is also available okay so now mysql is started here now i'm going to write the some command you please note down this command the first thing i want to know okay, what types of how many databases are available in my mysql so for that i am going to write a one command that is called show databases with the help of show databases i want to look at the database which are available in my table so there is a school database is also available now i'm going to create I'm going to create a database. So I'm writing a command create database. What I'm writing here, create database. Acha, one thing I want to explain while you are writing this so database command here, some of the database, it's a by default available and it's a given by the MySQL. While you are installing the MySQL, you will get this database in your computer. Sis, I think, okay. So this database you are going to get in your computer. So school is the my database only here okay so now i want to create one new database and the database name is the i'm giving the database name sch okay what database name i'm giving sch so i think i've written the wrong command here it's a date i have to write down the database so my database is created now i'm writing here show databases and while i'm giving while i'm giving this command you can able to find out sch is available here if you want to drop any database you want to delete any database you just write drop database sch okay be careful while create dropping the database because you are not going to get it back again okay so be ensure that certainly you want to delete it okay so database is deleted again i have to create the database so i'm writing the create database sch okay and if I'm giving the same command again, I'm getting an error message that is error this. So it can't create database because SCS databases exist. There is a one more command. Suppose you want to ignore this. Suppose I want to create another database SCH1. But here I'm writing if not exist. What I'm writing if not exist means if this database is not available, then create this database. And if it is available, then don't create it. Yes. I'm giving the same command again and look this time here while I'm trying to create the SCS database because this database I have already created here. So I'm getting an error message say SCS databases exist. Now you can look at here I have created the one database which name is the SCH1. Okay. And again I'm trying to create the database which name is the SCH1. It is not like that see, I'm using the if not exist here. That's why I'm not getting the error message. Actually here I have written this command. That's why I'm not getting the error message. So if not exist is only pass the message to the SQL key you create the database but if it is already existing then don't show the any error message to me just give a warning message query okay and fine and if it is not available then please create it again. Now I am showing you show databases and now show where databases and semicolon and enter key and you are able to find out SCH as well as SCH1 both databases available here okay so my database is created after creating the database what you have to do you have to open your database 
what do you have to do you have to open your database to work inside the database so which command you have to use you have to use the use command which command you have to use the use command so use command is required to be applied here so i'm giving the use sch i'm using the use sch so my database is changed now i want to list the which tables are available in my database show tables nothing is there but when I'm using the use SCHOL school and then I'm giving the this command show tables, show tables, I'm able to see the teacher's database table is available, tables in the school. So teacher is available here. Okay. So this way you can check the tables also. So now again, I'm going to open the SCH because I want to work inside the SCH. So use SCH, show tables, nothing is here. And now I want to create a table here. So write the command create C-R-E-A-T create table and the table name is teacher and then I'm giving the enter key then I'm putting the open parenthesis. You can look at this arrow symbol. This arrow symbol is saying that the more command is required, more information required. Command is still not ended here. As you know, in a MySQL, the semicolon is the last portion of the command SQL statements. So now I want to write the table, uh, create a table. So which column we are required teacher ID we need, first name we need, last name we need, gender, salary, date of birth and department number. So just giving the same command I'm writing here. The first is the teacher ID. I think what is the first command that is the teacher ID. So I'm giving here teacher ID. Don't put any space in between the column name, name the data, data type is in teaser comma. Okay, comma. After get, after teacher ID, I'm going writing then first name, first underscore name. And this data type is the varchar, varchar 20, okay, comma. Then I'm giving the last name, last underscore name. And again, I'm writing here varchar, varchar 20, okay. Then now, now I'm giving the salary, salary, and this is the decimal. I have to check what is the next information that is the gender and then salary. Okay. So I'm giving the gender here. No problem. I can create it anyway. Gender, cat, and this is the one character long only. Then I'm giving the salary. Salary is the decimal data type and it is the 10 comma 2 characters. Okay. 10 comma 2, the length of this. Then after then uh, what we have to do? Salary, salary, given, date of birth. What is this? Date of birth. So date of birth, I'm writing here date of birth and this is the date data type and then I'm giving the department number, department number and this is the integer only. And then no more data column is required. So close parenthesis and same column and my table is created. Now I'm giving the show tables command and you can see your table teacher is created. And if you want to check the what is the columns and what are the informations are there, then you will write here describe teacher then you are able to get the all other information what is the name of the column here teacher id first name last name gender salary date of birth department number the teacher id is in teaser first name is varchar 20 last name is varchar 20 gender is char 1 salary is decimal 10 comma 2 date of birth date and department number in teacher so this way you are able to create your table and you can check your table so for this for today, in the next video, we are going to talk about the database constraints, how you can apply the constraints in your table and how you are going to alter that some tables attributes. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. If you have not subscribed my channel, please subscribe my channel. Put a like, uh, just press on the like button and share my channel. Thank and share my video. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.